In September 2014, it was revealed that Tesco had overstated their first half profits by £263 million. This followed a number of telltale signs that they were experiencing problems. Profit was falling, dividends were slashed, and in response, share price was plummeting. CFO Laurie McElwee quit in April 2014, and CEO Philip Clark was fired in July. Following the announcement, Deloitte began an investigation and uncovered that commercial income had been inappropriately accounted for, bringing second half income into first half statements. So, what happened? Commercial income is when suppliers pay Tesco for helping to promote their products and manage their brand. The problem arose when Tesco had to estimate the value of these payments and using their biased judgement overinflated the already high figures. So how did it happen? Here is the fraud triangle. It shows the prerequisites of a fraud. The first prerequisite is situational pressures. In the case of Tesco, there were three main pressures to inflate profit. The first was a falling market share as budget supermarkets such as Aldi were on the rise. The second was the horse meat scandal of 2013 that reflected badly on Tesco and caused a drop in sales. The third was Tesco's target setting and compensation schemes. Management were incentivized to artificially increase profit to try and meet their high performance targets and receive their large bonus and share payments. The second and third prerequisites are personal characteristics and available opportunities. CEO Philip Clark was believed to have been aware of the fraudulent financial statements for a number of years before it was uncovered. The fact that he allowed it to continue shows that his personal characteristics were unethical and his position in the firm gave him available opportunity to circumvent internal controls. In the hierarchy of information systems, corporate governance should have picked up on the error when internal controls failed to stop it. The issue was that of Tesco's 10 board members. Two, including the chair of the board, were ex-PWC employees. This shows a breach of independence. The next level of the hierarchy is auditing. Unfortunately, there are a number of threats to independence here too. In the financial year 2013-14, PwC was paid £10.4 million to audit Tesco. At the same time, it was paid £3.6 million for consultancy work. This creates a self-interest threat, where PwC are inclined to keep Tesco's management happy for their own sake. PwC had also been auditing Tesco for 32 years. This presents a familiarity threat, as PwC and Tesco had a cosy relationship. The auditor was also accused of looking specifically at the timing of supply payments and still signing off on the fraudulent statements. So, how could this be prevented from happening again? Tesco should start at the top of the information systems hierarchy. Regulatory systems ultimately have the power to prevent and detect fraud, with the threat of prosecution and barring from the profession for those involved. For the systems lower down on the hierarchy, the COSO framework provides a model for good control. Let's start with the auditors. The COSO model states that weak internal controls should lead to a higher risk level, which in turn should lead to more controls testing. Also, by following the EU audit reforms that are currently being implemented, Tesco can protect themselves from threats to independence. To reduce the familiarity threat, audits now need to be put up for tender every 10 years, and there is compulsory auditor rotation at least every 20 years. PwC were replaced by Deloitte after the scandal, and Tesco should ensure they change their auditor regularly to avoid another familiarity threat. The reforms also include limits on the provision of non-audit services and bans on certain services. This will help to prevent a self-interest threat. However, auditors cannot be expected to uncover all fraud. This falls to the corporate governance system. The COSO model stresses that the board of directors should be independent and have sufficient power and inclination to overrule a dominant CEO. These board members should also have the necessary knowledge of the industry and company to set realistic targets and hence not encourage management to fraudulently increase their profits to achieve higher bonuses. Good corporate governance should prevent circumventing of internal controls. These internal controls also need to be updated. As controls become more automated, Tesco need to ensure they can rely on their IT systems. The creation, operation, authorization and monitoring of a system should be carried out by different people. The creation could involve inter external experts, operations would involve more junior members of staff, authorization would involve management and monitoring could involve both management and internal auditors. The COSO model lays out two ways of monitoring internal controls. The first is continuous monitoring, 
where management look at trends based on data from the system and investigate any anomalies. The second is periodic monitoring, which is carried out by internal auditors. The COSO model also requires a commitment to integrity and ethical values. Management should ensure they set a tone in the working environment that encourages challenge. A change in recruitment and training policies will also help here. Independent background checks can be carried out on senior management before they're employed and code of conduct training will help the ethical standards to trickle down to all employees. In conclusion, an information systems overhaul can restore investor confidence in Tesco and prevent a similar control failure from happening again.